Imagine, if you will, a tapestry of time where humanity's thread weaves through the fabric of the cosmos, ascending rungs on a ladder that stretches into the vastness of space and the breadth of time. Our journey, characterized by changes in population and the rise and fall of great empires, is now extending towards the stars, driven by our intense pursuit of energy. This quest for power is not merely a struggle for resources, but a narrative of our evolution and refinement. It was Nikolai Kardashev, the Russian astrophysicist, who in 1964 crystallized this quest into a scale that categorizes civilizations based on their ability to harness energy, from the confines of their planet to the expanse of the galaxy. Carl Sagan, a steward of the stars in the realm of public science, refined Kardashev's concept. He envisioned a more nuanced scale, a continuum that accounts for the intricate gradations in a civilization's technological maturity rather than rigid categories. On this grand stage, despite our prolific use of energy, humanity stands at the precipice of a Type 1 civilization. We bask in a solar bounty of 10 by 16 watts. By Sagan's calibrated scale, our civilization is at a tentative 0.73, not yet masters of our planet, but aspirants to a cosmos that beckons with boundless power. Technological advancements over the past 5,000 years have propelled our species to a dominant position on Earth and placed us on the cusp of achieving a Type 1 civilization status and potentially beyond. We are already an impressive 73% of the way toward clinching Type 1 status, but according to the latest data from NASA, we won't become a Type 1 civilization until the year 2371. The paper supported by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory states that to reach even the basic level of a Kardashev Type 1 civilization, we must do two things. Develop more advanced technology and share it with all responsible nations. Make renewable energy accessible to all parts of the world. Otherwise, warn the authors, humanity cannot avoid the Great Filter. The concept of the Great Filter is put forward to explain the Fermi Paradox, which questions why, given the vast number of stars, and potentially habitable planets in the Milky Way galaxy. There is no clear evidence of other advanced civilizations. It suggests that there is some stage in the progression from lifeless matter to a technologically advanced civilization that is extremely hard to achieve or survive. This filter could be behind us, ahead of us, or we might currently be facing it. If the great filter is ahead of us, it implies that the steps we've already passed are relatively easy to achieve and there's some daunting challenge ahead that prevents civilizations from reaching a Type 1 status or beyond. If the filter is behind us, it suggests that we are one of the very few, or perhaps the only civilization to have made it through, which would explain why we haven't encountered others. Transitioning to a Type 1 civilization on the Kardashev scale involves a massive leap in our ability to harness and utilize the energy resources of our entire planet. A Type 1 civilization is a planetary dynamo, fully harnessing the energy of its home world. Geothermal taps could reach deep into the Earth's crust, where the heat of the planet's core is siphoned off to power cities. Hydroelectric systems would not only use rivers, but could exploit tidal forces on a massive scale. Solar energy would leap forward with space-based collectors, vast arrays that orbit the Earth, capturing the sun's power and beaming it home without atmospheric dilution. Wind farms, too, would evolve. These would be the engines of a world where energy scarcity is a thing of the past. Gazing further along the spectrum of time, a thousand years from now, humanity stands on the cusp of becoming a Type II civilization. As solar system-wide architects, we would have realized the dream of the Dyson Sphere, or perhaps its more feasible cousin, the Dyson Swarm. Enveloping our sun with a cloud of energy-harvesting satellites, capturing every whisper of solar wind. The engineering marvels of such a civilization are not confined to power generation. They extend to the terraforming of moons and planets, the mining of asteroids for precious resources, and the establishment of permanent colonies on Mars and beyond. This era is marked by the first cautious steps into the broader solar system, with missions akin to the Artemis program now seen as the quaint first voyages of a bygone era. These pioneers set the stage for a species that no longer looks up at the night sky with wonder, 
but gazes out from a multitude of worlds, each a node in an expansive human network. The technological leaps required, advances in propulsion systems, life support, and the construction of vast space habitats are monumental, but they are simply the next logical steps in our relentless pursuit of progress. Peering further still, a hundred thousand years into our trajectory, we may witness humanity's ascension to a Type III civilization. Galactic engineers by right, our kind would have spread across the Milky Way, a living testament to life's tenacity and ingenuity. The energy of entire solar systems would be at our command, with star-lifting technologies allowing us to extract stellar plasma for our purposes, whether to fuel our expansion or to prevent the death of our sun. Communication and travel across such vast distances would be facilitated by theoretical constructs that now edge closer to reality. Wormholes, once the province of science fiction, could become the interstellar byways of our galaxy-spanning civilization, collapsing space and time into manageable threads. Our understanding of the fundamental forces of the universe, gravity, electromagnetism, and the strong and weak nuclear forces, would be intimate and nuanced, allowing us to manipulate them as an artist wields paint on a canvas. At this pinnacle of civilization, the concept of individual might evolve beyond recognition. A collective consciousness could emerge with thoughts and knowledge shared instantly across the galaxy, creating a society that is as much a singular entity as it is a federation of star systems. This interconnectedness would herald a golden age of galactic culture with art, science and philosophy flourishing in an exchange as limitless as the stars themselves. Finally, a million years from now, we can imagine our descendants as Type IV entities, the masters of energy, transcending the limits of galaxies and possibly even influencing the structure of space-time itself. These beings, our far future progeny, may harness the wheelwork of galaxy clusters. Drawing from the wellspring of dark energy, or tapping into the cosmic lattice that is the grid of space-time. It is within this epoch that the concept of a multiverse could move from the theoretical to the experiential. Pocket universes, each with its unique laws of physics, may serve as laboratories for further understanding or as sanctuaries to preserve the diverse tapestry of life. The control over matter and energy at such a scale would be akin to a form of poetry written in the language of creation itself, with civilizations wielding the power to birth stars and even sculpt the architecture of reality. The journey along the Kardashev scale, from our present position to the echelons of a type four entities, is more than a story of technological ascendancy. It is a testament to the unyielding human spirit, to our enduring quest to explore, understand, and ultimately merge with the vast cosmos. Each step requires a paradigm shift, not just in our capabilities, but in our collective consciousness, our ethics, and our understanding of our place in the universe. As we reflect on this grand continuum, we recognize that the legacy of our species is not merely the monuments we build or the systems we put in place, but the narratives we craft about our place in the cosmos. One million years from now, our descendants may traverse the multiverse or sculpt the fabric of reality itself, yet the memory of Earth, the cradle of our genesis, will remain etched in the annals of their cosmic consciousness. The words of Carl Sagan, who saw Earth as a pale blue dot, remind us of our humble beginnings. From this distant vantage point, the Earth might not seem of any particular interest. But for us, it's different. Consider again that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar 
every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species, lived there, on a mote of dust, suspended in a sunbeam. The earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. Think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals and emperors so that in glory and triumph they could become the momentary masters of a fraction of a dot. Think of the endless cruelties visited by the inhabitants of one corner of this pixel on the scarcely distinguishable inhabitants of some other corner. How frequent their misunderstandings. How eager they are to kill one another. How fervent their hatreds. Our posturings, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe, are challenged by this point of pale light. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. Visit? Yes. Settle? Not yet. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our stand. It has been said that astronomy is a humbling and character-building experience. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits than this distant image of our tiny world. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known. <laughs>